So what's happened when it's actually been studied when they've put snakes in racks and then vivs? Well, 35 royals were housed in a rack and then they put them in a viv. This was in Germany, this paper. The snakes expressed a greater amount of behaviours in the vivarium and then they expressed stress behaviours in the rack. So if you can see on the left, I don't know if you can read it from there, but it's the frequency of mouth pushing against the barrier. So I don't know if you've ever seen it where they're like pushing their nose against something. That happened proportionally way more in the rack than it did in the vivarium. And it happened between the hours of 4 p.m. and 11. And, uh, and what happens in an opaque rack? You can't see in. And the only time you see in an opaque rack is when you open it. And then what happens when you open it? You, you interrupt what the snake's doing. So if that's at the front pushing and you open that on oh, the snake's at the front, they're like, oh, you must want feeding. And you'll never ever see what the snake's doing because to open it to see, you will, you will interrupt that behavior and you'll never get a true reflection of what they're doing when you're not influencing it. So when they went into the, the actual vivarium, they did a whole lot more and they had more neurons firing in relation to different things they can do. They have cognitive abilities that are firing. Parts of their brains are firing now that are doing more than what they could do in that top rack. By the way, they put more in that rack up there than what traditionally we see as a standard in the hobby. There's even a hide, which is uh, more than what some give. But what happens when we do the reverse? Because let's face it, people generalize the animals as being like, oh, it's just a royal, we just transfer it from whatever housing we want. Well, with the removal of choice and agency to go about their day and do what they want at any given time is incredibly stressful. The removal of enrichment and valued resources can, feed, can lead to feelings of learned helplessness in depression-like states. And that is conserved across the board. That is not something that's from human studies, this is from animals. What's interesting is that when it was studied in rats, when they induced rats into this depression-like state, they ate more. So what do people claim rats really are good for? Getting them to eat more. So that's not been studied in snakes to say that, but just something to think about there. So what happens when you take an animal that knows stimulation, complexity, that has developed neural pathways over a myriad of things, and then you put that in a state, state of sensory deprivation with nothing? What do we think is going to happen? How many times have you heard someone say, oh yeah, it just needs time to settle down. Just needs time to settle down. It'll be all right. It'll settle down. It's not settling down. What's happening is it succumbs eventually to a state of learned helplessness. This means that it learns its actions have no effect upon the outcome and the snake just gives up and becomes apathetic. And then this is interpreted by the keeper as the snake being content. And then we go back into this feedback loop of us not knowing what's going on. Again, it's not the snakes, it's entirely us. 